Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Uh, the topic today is going to be blessings. And um, to begin with, where is the origin of blessings? Are, are blessings in the Torah? The fact that we should make blessings or not? And the answer is twofold. They are and they're not. In reality, there really is only one blessing that we are commanded to make by God. The verse says in Hebrew, And when you eat and you're sated, you should bless the Lord your God. That's it. And from this the rabbis understand, eat and be sated means that if you have a meal, and since, again, that uh, bread is the, is the staple of life, especially in olden times, that when a person would have bread at a meal and he would be sated, then there was a command from God to make the blessings. And again, this goes back to Moshe, the first, and Yoshua. There are different authors of how we have the blessing today. <clears throat> but the what we call the birchat mozon, the blessing after meal, what we call grace, is toretic. Uh, it is the only one of the blessings that are toretic. So why do we have all these other blessings? I mean, it's we, for everything. Um, we have blessings when we when we have uh, something when we have cake. We have blessings another blessing when we have fruit when we have vegetables, um, wine, and then the, a general blessing of shahakol that covers everything else uh, that that doesn't fit into any other category. And not only that, we also have after blessings. So how do we understand this whole thing? What why did the rabbis do that? This because they felt like it was a reason. So. I mean, God's not a person, of course. But for the sake of understanding, let's imagine that there was someone who was the richest man in the world and a self-made man, someone that would be <clears throat> just beyond our grasp in his greatness. If he was really that great and that astute, he would also understand that in order for him to be a giver, part of giving is to allow people to give to you. But the problem is, if you're that wealthy, if you have everything, anything you want, you have. So you don't real, nobody can really give you any gifts, and you don't open that door. But if you're that smart and that astute, what you're going to do is you're going to intimate that there's something that you may want that people can give you. Um, I had a friend used to call things he gave me belly button cleaners, something that nobody else would think about, something that was unique and wouldn't be something you necessarily would go into the store for. It would be something you would think about to show that you care. So what the rabbi saw is that God intimated that if you have a meal, if you have bread, then bless me. And we'll talk about what blessing God means in a minute. But say a blessing. And the rabbi said, well, you know, blessing really means saying thank you, which is what Judaism is all about. We are called Jews from the word Yehuda, which where the word Jew comes for, from the word Hodah, being saying thanks. If you take all of Judaism and you melt it down to one concept, it's really saying thank you to man and to God. And again, hopefully we'll touch a little bit on that as well. But so when God stated this, the rabbi saw in this a window of opportunity. That if God wanted us to say thank you to him for having a meal with bread, well then he probably would want us to also say thank you if we have cake, or if we have a fruit, or if we have a vegetable, or anything. Why shouldn't we thank God? After all, if you go to someone's house and they give you a glass of water, you're going to say thank you. Why wouldn't we do the same to God? So they saw this intimation of what God wanted by the fact that he said, if you have a meal. So that's where the idea of saying thank you. But then the rabbis took it one step further. Again, thinking in human terms, if I'm going to thank someone, shouldn't I also say please if I want something from them? And this becomes the beginning blessing. So from this comes the idea of blessing God both before we have something and then after we've received that which we've requested. So the blessings before and afterwards. And again, those are rabbinic. But in a sense, they're greater because we show our great love and appreciation for God by stating them. And it's interesting. 
many times, I know myself included, we remember to say the beginning blessing. We say, please. But many times, once we're sated, <laughs> we forget to say thank you. And there's an interesting thing that uh, before we bless for God for the, having a meal with bread, again, we, we say we wash our hands with some water. We call it maya makronim, the water after the meal. In fact, according to the Shulchan Aruch, the law of Code, Code of Jewish Law, if you only have enough water to wash your hands before the meal or this water after, you save it for after. It was called, uh, because of the, what called Melech Sodom, because of the salt of Sodom. And they said because it was something that was dangerous. People in those days, even Middle East, even today, they ate with their fingers. So the, the salt, the fear was that if you had salt on your fingers, you put it to your eye, you could blind yourself. So therefore, they would wash their fingers and their mustache, so to speak, to take off that salt. And this is where the anything that's a matter of life and death, something that can hurt you, has precedence to something that is just a ritual. So therefore, if you have enough water to wash your hands before the meal or enough water <clears throat> to do this washing called maya makrom, the water afterwards, at the end of the meal, you do the water afterwards. But what's interesting, so it's called Melech Sodom because of the, the salt of Sodom. There's a very interesting commentary that says the reason why it's called the water of Sodom is because the, the Sodomites, the Sodomites, were noted for their belief in being stingy. Hospitality was considered a, a capital punishment in Sodom. You did not take any guests. In fact, Abraham lived down the road, and that's where he got all his business from. Anybody who comes to Sodom, they say, well, you know, we don't do that here. You know, but there's a guy down the road, he'll give you a meal down there, just go see him. And he did a real good business by the Sodomites just sending everybody down to his house. And this is how he was able to bring people to God. But when we, so when we call it the salt of Sodom, what we're really saying is at the end of a meal, we want to wash this away. At the beginning of a meal, if a poor person were to come to your house and ask to join you at the meal, you're hungry, he's hungry, maybe you'll feel a kinship towards him and actually allow him to partake of the meal with you. That's a possibility. But at the end of the meal, already then, you're already sated and he's hungry. So you may take on the same attitude as the people of Sodom. So what the water does is washes that feeling away. So that even at the end of the meal, if a person were to come, you would still feel benevolent towards him and still give him food. And that's another meaning of washing away the salt of Sodom and making you a kinder, more giving person, even though you're not in his place, because now you've been sated. So again, so again, the idea of saying thank you, again, why? Because we say, Lashem or Simolo, everything in the world belongs to God. So how do we acquire it? When we make a blessing, we say please and we say thank you and then we have a portion of it and it becomes ours. This is how we can acquire something in this world. Now, we say the words, when we make a blessing, we begin the word Baruch Atah Hashem, blessed are you God. <laughs> so we're blessing God, really. I mean, that's ridiculous because how can we bless God? Like we have some power to give something. We own nothing, we have nothing. So what does that blessing mean? So really the word Baruch really means not blessed. We're not saying we're blessing God, but we're saying God is the place where all blessings come from. So God that is blessed and that we're really asking him to give it to us. Now we know that according to uh, the Medrash that God gave, in fact, in the blessing that he gave in the Torah to Abram Ravina, very clearly it says that those, you, that those that you bless will be blessed. He gave Abram Avinu, Abraham, the ability to bless people. And Abraham passed it on to his descendants. So when we make a blessing, the truth of the matter is it says, call him Avorach Yavorach, anyone who blesses is blessed. So when we bless someone, we are blessed in return. And that goes for also people that you know and people that you have in contact with. When you give someone a blessing for something being good and you wish them well, the truth of the matter is it bounces back on you. So a person should never be stingy in saying kind words to people because that which you give, you will get back. As we know, if you pray for someone else, you'll be answered first. The same thing with blessings. Now, it's interesting that when we talk about this 
God, everything belongs to God. When God created the world, we see with first man <clears throat> that he really created this world, the world of action. And just like a circumcision, a man was not created perfect. There was something that needed to be done to make him tummim, as we know with Abram Rabino, which says that God said, circumcise yourself and make yourself perfect and walk with me. So there was something left over for man to do physically, that is to remove the foreskin. And in order for a man to become, so to speak, a partner with God, God left certain things for man to do. When first man was created, after the six days of creation, on the eighth day, that Saturday night, beginning of the eighth day, God showed Adam, first man, how to make fire, which was not a part in the world. All of a sudden he saw darkness, which he had never seen. According to the Medrash, <clears throat> that his, it doesn't say it was evening and morning and on the seventh day. So the seventh day was all light. And then when the sun set on Saturday night, which is why we bring fire when we do Habdallah, when we separate from the two and make the blessing, make a blessing over fire. Why fire? Because it was introduced on Saturday night when all of a sudden it's dark. And first man thought, Adam thought that the world would be like this forever because of his sin of eating from the tree of knowledge. But God told him and assured him this would be the part of nature. And he showed him how to make fire. So therefore he became a participant in the creation of the world by bringing fire into the world. Why fire? Because fire has both extremes. It binds, and it also deals with enthusiasm and warmth that a person has to have. That's the positive. On the other hand, it destroys. So again, a man has to be able to use those things in the world, both for good and for evil. Things are not bad. They're basically neutral. It's how we deal with them that becomes the key. And the other thing that God showed him how to do was to cross a horse with a donkey. He crossbred them and came up with a mule, which is strange. Why a mule? And again, the positive part of a mule is that it's a, an animal of burden that carries things, that, 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 has, that, that has a strong back, which is what we have to do to be successful. On the other hand, it's stubborn, which is a negative trait. But also it's interesting that a mule cannot recreate, it cannot have children. And that's another part that was God was saying. Yeah, you can crossbreed, but you can't make what I do. You can't take something from nothing. You can't bring life into the world. What you can do is take something from a horse and a mule and a, and a donkey and make a mule with it. So that becomes a difference, again, to teach man that man is man and God is God. Very quickly, they tell a story of a, uh, becoming a partnership with God. Of the Apta Rebbe, there was a man who was giving blessings to people, and the blessings were coming true. And he wasn't sure where this came from, and he was afraid it came from the side of evil. So he went to see the man. He was an innkeeper. And he watched him as he did his, his business. And he saw that the man, just an innkeeper, seemed like a simple person. But he had two boxes. And he was putting money in one box, money in the other box. But he watched him. And he saw that nothing special. So as the day ended and the man was cleaning up, the Apta Rebbe went up to this man and said, I hear that you are able to give blessings. Where does this power come from? And he says, I really don't know. All I do know is that years ago, I, my business was doing very badly. My wife told me, Chaim, it's time. Go find a partner. Leave here because you're not doing well. You need to find a partner to go into business with. So I took her advice and I started to leave town and I got to the edge of town and I thought to myself, partner, what greater partner can there be than God? So I stopped at the edge of town and I looked up to the sky and I said, dear God, why should I look for a human partner? Why you and I should be partners. And from now on, everything that I make half to you and half to me, you and I will be partners. And I slapped my thighs and I said, it's a deal. That's what we're going to do. And I felt in my pocket there was a coin. I don't know where it came from. And I took it as a sign that that silver coin that was in my pocket came from God, and he accepted the partnership. And from that day on, I have two boxes. One I give to God and one for me. And ever since that day, I've been very successful. And somehow, some way, every blessing that I give to people comes true. And the after Rep to smile and he said, of course it does. Because whatever one partner does, the other partner has to stand behind. And when you truly made God a partner, he took that partnership 
And now you and God are true partners. And he blessed him and hugged him and kissed him and left. And that's the idea. A person needs to bring God into his life. Make God part of the partner. And understand that blessings come from God. And when you attach yourself to God and have that sort of belief, then there are blessings in every facet of your life. And everything you do will be better and blessed from your partner in heaven. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and have a great Shabbos.